trumpet slams the drums, here he comes. Hopalong Cassidy, here he comes. City, St. Louis, Chicago, yeah, even New York. Ah, oh, that's fine. That's great. What are we going to use for money? When are we going to start? Well, I got the money all taken care of. We're going to start just as soon as the irrigation ditch is dug. The irrigation ditch? Wait just a minute. Maybe you'd better sit down here. I'm sure you're feeling all right. Now, start at the beginning and fill in the details, will you? Well, there's not much to fill in. You know why I went to Twin Rivers this morning? Sure. To deposit the thousand dollars I got for the cattle I sold. You did deposit it, didn't you? Well, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? I invested in some land for you where they're going to dig an irrigation ditch. That land's going to go sky high and you'll be rich. That sounds like another one of those hair-brained ideas of yours. You're the worst doubting, Thomas. You just wait till you see for yourself. I'm going to see for myself right now, and you're coming along. Come on. I'm right behind you. You're going to tickle me pink to see you change your mind. Yeah, I bet it will. <laughs> Red is the greatest sidekick a man ever had. But in his efforts to be helpful, he can get himself into deals a Philadelphia lawyer couldn't straighten out. How are things going? We've been busy. Oh, that's music to my ears. My partner in? Yes, Mr. Rivers is inside. Thank you. Everything all right? Listen, when I take care of anything, I do it right. Slim's taking the telegram over to the bank now. Excellent, excellent. By the time that hick banker learns the truth, we'll have our pile and be far, far away. I feel that this is going to be more productive than our last effort. Miss Mayo says you were busy while I was gone. That's right. Just cast your eyes on that. One hundred acres, one thousand yeah. dollars. Hop along Cassidy. Where have I heard that name before? But Cassidy's a local bigwig. Being able to say he's one of our buyers will sell more land than all the high press of salesmanship we could use. Good. What's he look like? Oh, I don't know. His man Red Connors made the deal for him. <laughs> that Connors is a dumb squirrel if I ever saw one. <laughs> what a difference that make to us. We've got Cassidy's money and his name on our contract. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much. Here, help yourself. Help yourself. You better wait over there. How do you do? I'd like to talk to someone about this land deal. Oh, come right in. A gentleman to see you. Well, how do you do, sir? How do you do, sir? I'd like to find out about this land you gentlemen are selling. Glad to tell you the whole story, my friend. <laughs> my name is Rivers, and this is Mr. Dale, my associate. How do you do, sir? Have a seat. Thank you. I feel sure that, uh, that you feel like making a substantial investment, providing we can show you how you can make 500% profit in six months. Before we go into that, I'd like to hear your proposition. Why, it's the greatest opportunity offered to smart businessmen like yourself, west of the Mississippi. And let me tell you something, my friend. Hopalong Cassidy bought some of the land. 
Is that so? Well, this is beginning to sound very interesting. I'll give you the facts, my friend. You can draw your own conclusions. Rivers glibly explained that they had obtained title to thousands of acres of government land. Land on which only sagebrush and mesquite now grew, but which would soon become a fertile valley, a virtual promised land. According to Dale, the engineer, this was to be brought about by digging an enormous irrigation ditch from Harcher's Canyon, 50 miles away. The longer their sales talk continued, the more I was convinced my fears were well founded. Red had bought worthless land for my hard-earned money. What worried me most was knowing that these high-pressure confidence men were using my name to sell unsuspecting friends. And now that you realize what a great opportunity this is, how much would you like to invest? Oh, I'm afraid you jumped to the wrong conclusion. Uh, how so? I didn't say I wanted to invest in your proposition. You couldn't be making any mistake. No, sirree. Now take Hopalong Cassidy, for instance. What about Hopalong Cassidy? He has invested $1,000. He realizes what a fine opportunity it is. You know him, of course. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I'm Hopalong Cassidy. <laughs> well, I, I certainly am happy to meet you, Mr. Cassidy. <laughs> Since you're an investor and you know exactly what we're trying to do, you'll be glad to lend your support. That depends on what I see. You say you're digging an irrigation ditch? Oh, yes, yes. We're working on it right now. Where? East of town. I think I'll ride out and have a look at that. Uh, <clears throat> that's a quite little trip, Mr. Cassidy. Oh, that's uh, all right. I need the exercise. Uh, well, I'll ride out with you. I have to go out there anyway. Just give me a moment to leave these papers with our secretary, Miss Mayo. Sure. Fire these, please. Well, goodbye, sir. No, no, no. Sit down. We'll have a little chat. No, okay. I think we've had quite a chat. You will excuse me, please. You fellas know anything about Hopalong Cassidy? I'll say we do. He's the sheriff of this county and a bad hombre to tangle with. Doing on the ditch. Well, let them look. Boys are out there. No. You better take a run out, Slip. I want them to look busy when we get there. Sure, I'll make it look good. office, I wondered what had become a Red, who was supposed to have waited for me outside. I hoped he wasn't buying more land. Dale began to offer excuses why the work we were about to see hadn't progressed farther. Pending a bank loan, which they were negotiating today, they had only begun a preliminary survey. From now on, work would progress at full speed. I could tell he was uneasy. He seemed to sense I knew what he was up to. Boss is bringing somebody out. Get busy.
Red explained what he had seen, and it sounded more like an excuse than an accusation. Slim alibied he had seen Red acting suspicious and had gone after him to find out why. Dale raged because the surveyors slept when they should have been hard at work. When I had seen, I knew that the surveyors were a phony setup. I could tell, too, that Red was beginning to realize he had made a bad investment. What have you guys been doing? I expect you to be another mile up the line. See you later. Right. We headed back toward Twin Rivers. From now on, you better keep on your toes. Wait out here, I'll be out in a minute. Hi, Mr. Todd. Oh, what can I do for you, Mr. Cassidy? Did uh, Rivers and Dale borrow some money from your bank? I'm sorry, but that's personal business. I realize that, but I'm asking as the sheriff. In that case, yes. They borrowed $5,000 to start digging the irrigation ditch, but it was well secured. By what? They deposited a check for $15,000 on a Chicago bank. Of course, we only took the check for collection. But this morning, we got back a telegram saying that it had cleared. Mm -hmm. uh, may I see the telegram? Yes. But why should they wire instead of sending the money in the usual way? I asked them to. Rivers and Dale needed the loan. As soon as I received confirmation, I deposited the money to their account. I see. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Todd. Glad to accommodate. Any time. Frankly, I'm worried about Cassidy nosing around the way he's doing. Now, we can clean up 15, maybe 20,000 a couple of weeks, but we've got to get him off our necks. If he gets in our way, it'll be his tough luck. Uh, by the way, what you do with that fellow you were waiting for this morning? We left him. What, right there? Sure. Why, I'm surprised, Frank. That's dangerous. You know that. Now, you better send the boys out right away and dispose of him. Okay. It'll make you feel any easier. As Red and I headed toward the bar 20, I kept thinking about that telegram from the Chicago bank. Maybe it was because we had just passed the spot where the road cuts over the hills to Bruxton, where the telegraph office is located. Anyhow, I couldn't understand why Rivers and Dale were in such a hurry they couldn't wait for their check to clear in the usual way. I decided to forget, then... The man had been shot through the head. He looked vaguely familiar. We began to look for identification.
body had been identified as that of Joe Benson, the telegraph operator from Bruxton. He left a wife and four kids, who would now be the real victims of the brutal killing. I figured the murder had to tie in with the telegram from Chicago to the Twin Rivers Bank. I asked Red to ride to Bruxton and find out more about that telegram. He couldn't get back before dark, so I told him to meet me outside the office of Rivers and Dale. While waiting for Red to return from Bruxton, I searched the office of Rivers and Dale. I didn't know what it was I hoped to find, but there had to be something. There were two bank deposit books on St. Louis banks and under the names of Riverton and Lindale. Somewhere in the office, I knew there must be a list of others who had put their hard-earned money into the swindle. Put up your hands, Mr. Cassidy. Miss Mayo, I have found myself in less embarrassing situations. If the subject isn't too painful, maybe you'll explain why you broke in here. I'll be glad to discuss the whole messy business with you if you'll handle that. No, job. we'll talk as we are. May I put my hands down? No. What is it? Now we can discuss this a little more comfortably. Now what do you know about this land development company? Only what passes across my desk. But you must know that they're selling land they don't own to put in an irrigation ditch they have no intention of digging. Are they? Aren't they? Well, this whole thing smacks of grand larceny. You seem quite sure of that. Of that and other things, including murder. Murder? That's right. Now, I feel pretty sure you're not involved. So you won't mind answering a few questions about Rivers and Dale, will you? Mr. Cassidy, even if I wanted to, which I don't, I'm in no position to betray my employer's confidences. <laughs> I was pretty sure that'd be your answer. Hobby? Yes? Good evening, ma'am. Didn't expect to find you in here, but I didn't see you outside like you said. The door was open, so I just walked in. Did you find out anything? I sure did. Good. Wait outside a couple of minutes. I'll be right out. Check for 15,000 refused. Signors Arnold Rivers and Frank Dale not known here. Brush National Bank, J.D. Barton, cashier. Gosh, Hoppy, I'm sorry I got us into this. Oh, it'll probably be all right. At least we can save some of our friends from being cheated. I sure was surprised when you let that secretary go last night. Oh, she's only an employee. Red, she probably doesn't even know what they're doing in that thing. I wouldn't be too sure about that. You know how women are. No, how are women? Oh, now, you know I don't know nothing about women. Where are we headed for now? To the bank. I'm going to tie up Rivers and Dale's account, and then I'm going to put them under arrest. What makes you think they're the killers? Well, everything points to them, doesn't it? Let's go. Come in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. There's something I think you ought to know. Uh, you look as if it was serious. It is. Hopalong Cassidy searched this office last night. What's that? How do you know? I came back. I forgot my gloves. Well, go on, go on. What about Cassidy? I think he was looking for something concerning the bank. Yes, well, we have nothing to worry about. No, no. <laughs> we'll check on that later. Uh, yes, indeed. Well, thank you, Miss Mayo. Just the same. Very well. Not take any more chances. We've got almost nine thousand in that bank, including the loan. Let's draw it out. Keep it here in this safe, where we can get our hands on the hurry if we need to. Yeah, that's right, Frank. Bank's open now. I'll write a check. You take it over and cash it. Sure didn't like our drawing out all but a hundred dollars, but here it is. <laughs> Are they in? Yes. Red, you entertain Miss Mayo a couple of minutes. What a nice 
1993. What do you mean, breaking in on us like this, Mr. Cassidy? You're under arrest. On what grounds? Embezzlement, forgery, and murder. Why, oh, you tin badge yokel. As I was saying, you're under arrest. You've gone a little too far. I hope you know that, Cassidy. We'll let the court decide that. Come on, get on your feet. Get out of here. Hold it. Keep him covered, Red. Miss Mayo, so far you're in the clear on this thing. But I want you to wait here until I get back. There are a few things I want you to straighten up for me. I'll find something to do while I'm waiting. Thank you. Come on, let's go. Is that the dame that works for the boss? Yeah, and it looks like she's carrying that satchel the boss brought out of the bank a while ago. You reckon they're trying to run out on us? I don't know, but we're sure gonna find out right now. I didn't know whether those men had seen us or not, but it didn't matter. They were working for Rivers and Dale, and I wanted them for murder. Covered, Red. Get on your horses. Come on, Miss Mayo. Well, from what this paper says, I can't say that I blame you for trying to get back the money that uh, Rivers and Dale swindled from you and your friends. But there's one thing that's bothering me. Why didn't you cooperate with me from the very beginning? I got panicky. I didn't think. That's the trouble. Folks just don't think. If they did, they'd be careful what kind of schemes they put their hard-earned dollars into. Isn't that the truth? Well, it's all here. Looks like the folks will get back most of the money they invested. Oh, that's fine. Well, young lady, you're free to go home. Have your sheriff get in touch with me, and I'll send the bank book to him, and he can go about distributing the money. Thanks ever so much. I can never repay you. You're Goodbye. very welcome. Bye. Bye. Here you are, Mr. Cassidy. Thank you, Mr. Todd. Red, the bank is next door. Do you think you could get over there with this without uh, finding another scheme to invest in? Or should I let Mr. Todd take it over? Oh, Harvey. Mr. Todd, will you deposit that to my account, please? Very well. Thank you very much. Yes. Come on. Bye, now. Goodbye, sir. Hop along, Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. He'll return soon again. There's no use to.
to say goodbye until then.